So the next person up we have is uh, Demiano Oldonini, and uh, he's going to talk about creating data cubes for Belgium. Hi, right. can everybody hear me? Yes, we can. Right, thanks. Welcome everybody. Um, I will speak uh, a little about uh, occurrence cubes, so a way to aggregate heterogeneous pieces of occurrence data. Hi everyone, uh, I'm Damiano Aldoni from the Open Science Lab for Biodiversity, uh, externally from the team of the Research Institute for Nature and Forest in Belgium. Why do we work on occurrence cubes? Well, Everybody knows there is an ongoing biodiversity crisis. Uh, policymakers need uh, a suite of indicators. Uh, Geobon proposed essential biodiversity variables uh, to account for this. And uh, we need uh, intermediate data and a way to aggregate data, um, that so called data cubes. Uh, but how to do it repeatable, scalable, automated? That's the big questions. And uh, we would like to show a way to to count this big challenge. Uh, so first, what are we proposing? We know we have a lot of occurrences uh, uh, in GB for in other data portals as well. And we think occurrences can be uh, ideally um, thought as events in a three-dimensional space where these three dimensions are taxonomic, the taxonomy, so what? Uh, temporal dimension, so when? and a spatial dimension where. Uh, so from occurrences, you want to aggregate and to get a kind of occurrence cube. So you want to partition the three-dimensional space. Uh, for example, you want to uh, make a partition of species level for at years level. And for example, using a reference grid at uh, one by one kilometer south. Just an example. Uh, what uh, we produce is something like here uh, presented. So in a tabular representation where you have uh, the years, the three dimensions, so uh, time, um, space, and taxonomy, and the number of occurrences for each of these uh, um, three dimension cell. Uh, this is something that we will see afterwards and can be, be useful uh, for uh, some applications. Uh, how do we produce this? So the workflow that uh, we want to present to you is this one. Uh, first, uh, we would like to specify some constraints about what we want to investigate, where and when, and the granularity of this partition. Then we harvest occurrences, uh, for example, from GBIF, and uh, we want a kind of uh, data quality assessment. Then uh, we want to, let's say, solve uh, uncertainty uh, and then aggregate. And here you can see some um, application that we'll discuss afterwards. So first, specify constraints. What, where, when? This case, for example, we want uh, um, uh, focus on Belgium. We want uh, data from 20, 20, uh, 2000 and up to, to 2018 and uh, all occurrences uh, of genus Renutria. Uh, specific granularity, uh, we work at species level, so all, spe all um, data of this genus uh, are split uh, at species level, so in so Japonica, Sakhalinense, Bohemica, at time we divide them for each year, and spatial we use uh, the European uh, um, reference grid proposed from, from proposed by the European Environmental Agency. We harvest occurrences from GBIF. This is the DOI of this uh, download that I use for this example. Um, we do some assess data quality. We can split it, this data quality um, assessment in two uh, phases. First step is uh, at the uh, GBIF download itself. So we can just decide what we want to download from GBIF. For example, only data with coordinates and uh, 
with um, some pieces of records, so we avoid uh, living specimen, for example, and fossils. Then we can make some uh, processing after the download. So, for example, uh, discovering uh, data with some issues. Um, so data with our coordinates and so on, out of range, coordinate invalid, country coordinate mismatch, or current status to discover, for example, we don't want absences or excluded data uh, to a data cube that speaks only about uh, presences. And uh, then third step after your filter um, that can be refined, obviously this is just an example, um, you have to, let's say, solve this taxonomic uncertainty first. First, uh, the taxonomic uncertainty is solved actually by GVP using the GVP backbone. And so you have to pay attention that synonyms are uh, attached to their uh, accepted taxa. And for example, uh, lower ranks uh, are linked to uh, the species we are referring to. A second uncertainty is temporal, but it's quite trivial for most typical aggregation levels. So, for example, if you want to aggregate at year levels, then, for example, if you have an observation with a day and month and year, then they're obviously aggregated at year level without any uncertainty. The biggest problem with data is the spatial uncertainty, and it's actually not very uh, accounted uh, from, from actual um, methods. And you can see here, for example, from GDF data uh, from Flanders, uh, from Belgium, uh, this kind of patterns, you see? So if you just take the latitude longitude of data without taking account the uncertainty, you get these patterns. And this is a huge bias that uh, you have to solve. Otherwise you get uh, from results. Um, we propose this method, uh, which is uh, a random assignment to the grid within the uncertainty circle. So every data, every observation in GBIF is defined from a centroid, let's say here, and uh, its uh, radius of uncertainty. So for us, our observation is uh, a circle. This is an observation, not its centroid. This is actually a big statement that we do, um, but uh, it's quite important for the rest of the presentation. Um, then we randomly assign this observation to the grid uh, by making a random assignment. So for example, in this case, we assign this observation to this grid. This is quite trivial, obviously. Uh, so less uncertainty provides better results, obviously. So this is quite obvious. Here you can see uh, even data with uh, a small uncertainty can generate a uh, result that, uh, as here you see, the grid uh, is uh, not the grid um, cell of a centroid. So this is kind of compendium uh, abstract about uh, how we let's say, handle uncertainty. Then we aggregate. So we just count. Aggregate means counting. So how, how much occurrences for a specific taxon in a specific cell in a specific time interval are. Um, and so for example, here in 2014, for this uh, cell, for this species, we have 51 observations. Well, as you see from the previous slide, we have an uncertainty. And uh, we don't want to throw away this important information because, uh, for example, in this case, uh, about uh, all, uh, there is at least one observation with 10 meters uncertainty. This is the minimum of the coordinate uncertainty that you have among all these points, observations, sorry. Uh, in this case, for example, the, you have one observation, so this is quite uh, the same. Um, so you have one observation, the minimal coordinate uncertainty is quite high. So for some application, you probably you would like to throw away this data. So this is quite important because for some observation, you would like to 
uh, have precise data, but for some other applications, uh, we are not so much concerned about the uncertainty. Some example of uh, uh, this workflow. Uh, we uh, produce uh, clearance cubes uh, for Belgium and Italy, and we will further um, move to make clearance cubes for other European countries. Uh, you can try yourself, uh, the code is online. Um, we did the same for uh, non-native taxa in Belgium and Europe, and this is also a nice case why, uh, because uh, for Belgium, uh, we uh, also not we show how to make a cube um, with a not uh, homogeneous uh, um, partition at taxonomic level. So we have some uh, species, but we have also some uh, uh, subspecies, for example. This is also possible, obviously, thanks to the GP backbone. Uh, some applications. Well, if you project this cube, let's say, to the taxonomic temporal uh, dimensions, so you aggregate uh, all spatial information, then you can get uh, all the number of occurrences if you sum, you make a, if you sum all of the occurrences, or you get the area of occupancy if you just count the number of occupied uh, grid cells. So this is quite important for um, some indicators uh, about um, yeah, the area of occupancy, specifically for um, uh, protected areas, for example. Well, today, uh, Amy Davis uh, spoke about uh, risk map um, and species modeling. Well, um, indeed, she worked with this data, with this occurrence cube for Belgium as well. Um, another. Uh, and she needed indeed uh, data with uh, quite uh, precise data. So she removed uh, some data where the, uh, the uncertainty, spatial uncertainty was quite high. Uh, some species interaction uh, presented uh, by, by Groom, uh, Quentin Groom um, for the Ebenezer Challenge used uh, um, the Cubans Cube here. And now I want to say this is just uh, um, method that can be extendable. For example, um, you can have more than three dimensions. For example, you would like to add uh, the life stage uh, of the individuals, of, of the occurrences. So, for example, it was a juvenile, is adult. You want to maybe speak about the provenance um, of, um, of this data. So, this is just a, a a way to aggregate data that is, I find, I found quite flexible and extendable. Thank you, everybody, to listen to me. And uh, if you have any question, I'm here to answer. Thanks. Hey, thanks, Damiano. So let me just see that I saw a lot of questions coming in through the chat. Um, Starting off with David uh, Fischmuller, why divide the spatial grid into one kilometer blocks and not as a fraction of the coordinate grid degree with two decimal figures as precision? Uh, why do we use... Uh, uh, David, do you want to explain a bit further what you meant by that? Yeah, I can, I can do that. Uh, I saw in, in the table that you... Um, can you go to one of the slides where you had the table oh, itself? Yeah, yeah. Yes. Um, you this reference the, the grid also based on coordinate systems. Uh, and then this kind of can also lead to confusion, I guess, of the leading zeros, is it a 3.1 oh, or, or, or 31? And why not just take the coordinate system? I know that there are issues in, in, in being precise about this, but let's just say use uh, GPS with a well-defined ge geode. Um, and say we take the degree and two decimal places. That is roughly 1.1 uh, kilometers. So it's, it's close enough, but you can directly convert from the coordinate uh, to the grid cell and don't have to do any specific offset calculation because those 10% offset, they, they add up once you, so for, for every um, uh, 10 steps you take the coordinate, no, for every 11 steps you take the coordinate 
cells take uh, 10. So I guess that would make conversion a lot easier and uh, uh, the addressing, so. But um, first you can use uh, any grid cell that you, any system that you want. So this is uh, the European Environmental Agency grid. But uh, what we do actually is indeed uh, is a string manipulation because uh, to, to save time, we use the data as provided by GBIF with decimals. We transform them uh, to the uh, coordinate reference system of uh, EEA grid. And then uh, we just look about uh, these numbers to assign them to this grid. I don't know if it's, it's uh, answered yeah, so effect your question. Effectively, you make you make the file smaller because you're just having a reference to the grid and not the actual grid itself. Um, yeah, we, do, we don't use, uh, we don't make, yeah, we just use, we, we use string manipulation to do this quite fast. Otherwise it takes uh, ages to, to make uh, intersections of points on grids for um, so many points. And I mean, the but other indeed, yeah, but the, indeed the, the grid, uh, I mean, this is an example with a kind of grid you can use uh, a grid uh, that you that your um, policymakers want or uh, any, I mean there are propose, proposals to use a, a world wide grid so how to equally space the, the world in um, that is not indeed a square grid but it's hexagonal I think that's also possible um, I'm here just indeed to present a flexible way uh, and a kind of uh, uh, and it also that. depends on your environmental layers, what grid they're based on, which is obviously important. Anyway, uh, should we should move on? Paula Zamaggio says, why assign randomly to a grid and not score the possible grid spots where they could be according to some measure of coverage of that square by uncertainty yeah. and assign the square to a higher score? Yeah, and it's the standard. Well, the point is that uh, I thought indeed uh, at first, I thought I do the same what pa Paula Zemolio said. So, for example, in this case, uh, this is a high, as a higher uh, score, let's say. Um, so we just make a ratio of areas. No, uh, the point is that in this way you get uh, um, some. First, it's just a, a proportion of of likelihood. You get uh, some uh, real number instead of integers, and at the same time, uh, doesn't solve this problem because the center of a square. So you will have, for example, let's say if you have a big circle here, you have a lot of. You're not squares. sharing a screen. At least I'm not seeing it. So, are you I'm seeing it? a screen. Is okay, it? then it's just me then. Okay. So let's say that uh, let's say that you have a big uncertainty here, then you have a lot of squares with the same likelihood. Yes, so how you choose the, the one that is uh, linked to this occurrence. So you will get a lot of uh, um, x equal, let's say. So there's a lot of occurrences with the same possibility. So you will get uh, um, not integers. You have uh, fractions of uh, occurrences that is no, makes no sense. My idea uh, is to indeed to make this random assignment and uh, eventually you can have an ensemble of occurrence cubes. So if you repeat uh, this uh, process, uh, Monte Carlo like, you know, um, hundreds of time you have an ensemble of hundreds of cubes, then you can have uh, a better estimation of, for example, the occupancy. And indeed, you can have a nice uh, error bar uh, and confidence level on these indicators as well. This is indeed something that we are working on. We know that this method can generate different uh, output every time you uh, run the code. We know that. It's a uh, big, indeed, big. The, but this is actually how uncertainty is. We cannot, uh, as I said, uh, we don't solve actually uncertainty. We handle it the same. So I should be, I'm not sure we have time for all of these questions, but uh, Dimitri Schiegel asks, um, 
are current cubes EBV portal ready? Um, sorry if I missed the DOI, DOI citation aspect. The Oculus cubes uh, that we do are published on Zenodo with a DOI. So, I mean, we always try to make them public and um, citable. Yeah, I guess my question is, if I can jump, is uh, you produce them very well. You put them in Zenodo, they are there, they are citable with DOI, and I think anybody is welcome to pick them. But then where is the active agent here that if they are EEA ready, if they are EBV portal ready, for instance, um, how is the uptake uh, done? Do, do, like, do these big bodies actually go there and pick them? Is there automated flow of, of the cubes? Oh, yeah, yeah. So, well, no, um, no, this is still in a experimental phase. I would like people to start to experiment with this. We are indeed uh, in a preprint phase. Uh, we are uh, publishing this uh, uh, very soon. So we have not, uh, at least uh, we don't know people uh, using this uh, at such advanced scale, uh, case. We, for in TRIAS project, uh, in tracking invasive alien species, we use this for indicators. There are indeed uh, uh, for policymakers uh, relevant, at least in Belgium. So we use this already for some uh, for occurrence based indicators uh, which uh, account for a number of occurrences and uh, uh, occupancy in uh, protected areas for example but uh, yes so we cite this uh, in our project uh, because we are using this for this kind of uh, indicators but uh, for the rest of the world uh, we don't know still so tim had his hand up for a second there and just this bit up. Um, can you hear me? Yeah. Uh, yeah. It's, we, we actually have an open ticket on this, Dimitri, at GBIF, that uh, if this algorithm does um, build, gain traction, we'd be looking to implement this as a download format directly on GBIF. So you could come to GBIF, you could define your filters, and then it would be an implementation of this algorithm um, for for any query on GBIF and then citable. So we're, we're interested in what the community's uh, thoughts are on this algorithm as to whether we should progress with that. Okay, I think uh, although there's a few more outstanding questions, perhaps you can leave them right till the end if we have any more time, then we should really move on. Um, so I want to try and keep as much time as possible. Uh, the next speaker is Paul Kittle. 